Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police channel. To our loyal viewers and subscribers at the channel, we are a group of law abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen, but not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because it saves lives. That is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives on this channel. We at this channel aid criminals, their financiers, their supporters, enablers and the likes with a passion and we do not want them over here. Yes, let us repeat ourselves. We do not want any criminal supporters over here. Please, we do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you over here we want you the criminal supporters enablers financiers and all the likes to go to prison or madness let's me repeat myself we are the jamaica young police channel we do not want the criminal supporters on their circle over here we want you to go to prison or modern moving on to our video yeah, so as you know that we have done a video about um you know the killing of um Keith Clark, you know where the soldier them murder him. When I say about shootout, this a murder. And you can fire five hundred and seventy two rounds from an M6 from M16 rifles and shoot one man. You understand? That a murder. Plain and simple. So since I have done the video, um, you know, say that it's murder, then here comes something that resurfaces again. You know, about um yours truly. Yeah, so, you know, um, I don't know if this man is a soldier. So somebody from the Jamaica Young Police channel, one of the viewers and subscribers, um, they clip the, um, you know, screenshot this, send it to me and, and I said, boy, you know, this is like about, about, the, about the 48 person that sent this, um, why I'm supporting, you need to address this, you know. From this um, guy, this, um, and we are telling straight up on them thing there. The, the guy, the guy that started it, um, this thing with the soldier, his name is Wayne Thomas. They call him Jubi a Dan. I always say Dan. If you know what a Dan in a community, um, what their dealings with the community, you know, Dan a bad man, man we have illegal gun, man that you know, um, other uh, mother and father for send them data come and make them can do what they want to do. Yeah, and if you know, um, if you don't understand what we mean in Jamaican terminology, we are talking about men who coerce their family, yeah, to send their daughters so they can have sex with them. Not with their consent, you know, but because they're a bad man, because if they don't do that, then we kill the family. So that is what this man has um, have done. When I say allege, because we can tell you, say, this same man, um, we and um, Joby Thomas, you know, from um, them call him Heart of Gold. Because him photo used to, them used to have a photograph of him, paint on the wall of Moscow corner in a waterhouse. You know that you're truly criminal in a sentence just out in like me, because I don't like criminals. Yes, and I say it without any apologies. I never deal with the criminal them where I have to carry a brown paper bag and a gun coat. No, no I no, no grow no, no brown envelope got a gun coat. Because all of the criminals we deal with are some heartless murderers them. And them not afraid to kill people. And yours truly me always love the fight. So everything what I mean I sent on just out. Since I um when I was there, what they have been doing, they're trying to um they try to do all kinds of things. The amount of um you know unlawful killings that these people have um, you know, put my name, um, you know, to say that I am responsible for this and that and you understand? Even, they even create all fictitious victims, people don't even exist. And the amount of police that I have caused to be arrested and charged with murder, it's amazing, you understand? And I can categorically say that I believe in the rule of law. So this person, now, um, after I had released the video, so, um, so you know, it, um, the person's name is White Range. I'm not even going to try to find out who is White Range. Um, you know, if you remember, sir, well, this is someone who has been a very supportive of a channel for years. And yeah, we can't tell you that person who believe in I rule a lot, but apparently this video 
um they totally disagree with the video itself but as we say if you agree with all the time that means you're arguing it robot so you know people um he's thinking so he has asked some questions he says how many rounds uh, you know how many rounds did you use to kill the jdf corporal back in 1999 you shot the soldier in his back multiple times then um five <laughs> then five minutes after that apart you know based on what i am looking at it's uh the person said you lack knowledge and you weren't there stop talking rubbish are you not living in the u.s so how comes you know about jamaican affair that's a question and we answer that so remember you murdered jdf remember you murdered jdf corporal in april 1999 see if your garden skin to the level i don't know put the level we just put it on um so we'll address all of these questions you understand but we're gonna let you listen because this is how propaganda work you know you understand and um those those who listen to we and ugly some that are the other we and i told them you know yes and others there's so many people that they say all kind of things about me because them eat me you know yeah even people i grew up with eat me um yeah because here you know me have zero tolerance and me have me not serve sympathy coffee or sympathy tea or compassion um sandwich to no criminal for you kill people and you rob people and, and I do them things and I violate them rights no nobody feel like say you understand what I'm saying no me, not, me have zero sympathy for you and nobody feel like say if you shoot off of me when me a police or even now that me I go see a KPH me not that car I wasn't trained that way you understand even the police eat me and them thing them I tell you so I don't know them alone so I want you to listen to this guy and we're gonna address everything you know we're gonna address everything and look here them come with other everything with them them come with some of them we address some of them because if we even follow these people and keep addressing 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 the people say about we well the work is gonna be hampered because that is what they are trying to do but because of this thing now with this so with the soldier them were murder Keith Clark yeah, all of a sudden now, Keith Clark had labor right. I don't believe my labor right. Keith Clark had Jamaican. Keith Clark was in his home with his wife and his daughter. You understand? Keith Clark wasn't there with no Christopher do the squawk. Do the squawk. And I tell him, I ask. Ask bigger food. I'm soon telling him about it. Be, um, Christopher do the squawk was nowhere near there. He was in Maypen. You understand? Um, Gummy Beer and Danville Palmer and other men. Ask George Pong if you think a lie I'm telling. With AK-47 rifles and M16, they march, march with this man, with Christopher Dudu Squawk, and took him to Flitters Land and hand him over to Bigger Ford. And Bigger Ford drive from there to Tarrington Bridge and hand him over to a member of parliament. I ask you, I tell me, I tell you. So I want you to listen to this guy. You understand? So you watch, you listen, and you decide. Because, you know... We have enemy all over another circle, but you know what the Jamaica Young Police Channel is where the truth bites. Yeah. In Wayne Thomas, so I can tell him name. So when you go into your attorney, make no mistake with the name. I post a video calling out Jamaica Young Police. They are a the platform, they speak about corruption, burn it out clean. Them call out criminals who they think are criminals or who they get information on to say they are criminals and speak of activities. Mostly artists, police and TNP who they call criminal organization slash LBGTQ. They call it superintendent, ASP, DSP, even commissioners, artists, famous people who he calls criminal. Now talk to tell you as usual would watch people like these and sometimes make a check to see their background. So make a check on something that I read about from a longer at all the time. But I check to see if people remembered. Yes, they remembered. Dr. Campbell, who the people thinks that he was murdered in Seaview Gardens. So I call him out on it, expecting to be an intelligent person who he proposed to be on his channel and respond in an intelligent way. He did not do that. He responded without answering the question but proceed to call me names describing me like he did a lot of persons a lot of men but ugly and i'm a pmp criminal organization and he go on and on i don't know why i'm getting upset me never said me see 
it's alleged. Just like he called out a lot of persons. In his response, he's speaking about lawyer or contacting police. Like I'm supposed to be afraid. Him say I come from Canada. No investigator. Me live in a Jamaica. You have came in contact with me more than one time. And not only Jamaica, also in England. <laughs> yes, England. Where you saw me in a hotel lobby. Yeah, man. <laughs> anyway, when I go to say. But how you respond? It was as if I shouldn't say nothing or ask you nothing. You are the boss. You ask all questions. You make all allegations. However, you say a soiko. I'm not mad. I'm a still not call out your name. However, you bring on a corporal who came and deal with the situation. It doesn't matter how he addressed me. And at times, I don't know who this little person is. I don't know what to call him. Nothing wrong with that. Because you knew you was there when the shooting start until it end. And to hear allegation like this, you have a right to say what you say. But while you are saying, I don't know who this brother is, this vagaya is, you are still giving clarifications. And I respect that, the messenger. And the me so. What I said, he was always talking. And I bring on one of the late Corporal Campbell's, a cancer squaddy, I would say it's party, cause a soldier. And he went until how he felt. He also came to see if you showed a picture of the alleged shooter who was charged. And the people say they never see him. And him say so. And they went on to say it was Christopher Porter who had shot and killed Corporal Campbell. And they go as far as say it could be over a woman why it took the time and the opportunity to murder them. It's like what you say, people them say Tommy Thompson burn body. And when Tommy Thompson talk, you say my liar. At the same mouth, say you shot and murdered Corporal Campbell. You say you feel, because you say a lie they might tell by you. However, Corporal Blake came and said some things that we can listen to. He put himself on the scene. He put himself on the scene. And he's ready to answer all questions. Because he said in one of his posts, Tell that blagger say, Any question about the sea view, gas fire shooting, don't ask Christopher. Ask me. He said it. This post is not about the police shooting. Corporal Campbell. It's about Christopher, the perfect police. The one and only police who serve honestly. Never in a corruption, never in a mix up, never did anything wrong. The name can't call no nothing. That's all the question. So I guess you are shocked to see that the name call. And not anyone make it up, but it call. And it's not by any thief in police as you call them. No, I promised you people a part two in relation to the video I done now, in relation to allegations against young police channels creator. Um, allegations about how he shot a JDF soldier in the Seaview Gardens area during the, the, the gas crisis. Now, this is part two. So, big up the Jamaica Young Police Channel, Sir P. Large, uh, Papa's News, big up yourself. All right, let's go into the thing right now. Listen, I was stationed in Seaview Gardens for years. I was being charged in charge of crime in Seaview Gardens, so I have a wide knowledge of Seaview Gardens here. In the first place, they never wanted a police station in Seaview Gardens. Well, not the good people, but the criminals never wanted a police station in Seaview Gardens. But let me tell you about something about Seaview Gardens. Seaview Gardens is one of the best com was one of the best communities in the St. Andrew South area. I'm telling you that. Because Seaview have more good people in the in that one community more than any other company community that I have worked in the St. Andrew South area. So big up the good people of Seaview Gardens. Big up Seaview Gardens every day, every time. Good people there see you. We out there flying kite with the sun at a time like that because the whole community knew what was happening. Right? As you can watch the video, I will you see certain things written on that. You can see where I mark where the soldier was shot and where gunshots were coming from as it relates to this video. See the green arrows telling you where the shooting, the shot shots were coming from, where the police vehicle is, is where the police station is actually is. The, the police station is is, 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 is a good distance 
from where the, the, the JDF um, um, Corporal Campbell was shot. Therefore, the, it was a shootout between the men of Seaview Gardens from rooftops and all the arrows where you see. That is where all the gunshots were coming from in relation to the shooting. And if you see, I marked on the, the spot on the video where the soldier was shot. Understand? I marked the spot where the soldier was taken from. Because during the shootout, his wife ran across and we saw this woman running across even rolling where you see those cars that the woman was rolling in the ground so we were saying hold fire hold fire everybody was saying hold fire everybody was saying hold fire and it's at that time when we said hold fire if you see anything there gunshots were coming from we said hold fire at that time when the, the, the woman was rolling on the ground I saw her picked up went behind one of the columns of the basic school that building that you see to the right they, but she went behind the building and removed the man and I realized the man had blood on the side of his shirt the man had blood on the, on the side of his shirt so that must have been Carpal Campbell of the JDF so no police intentionally shot Carpal Campbell of the JDF understand and the rumor was being spread that police murdered Carpal Campbell and even went in the station and changed out them barrel in a them gun and all of that how how, how would police do that in the middle of a shootout? And the thing and the questions that have been asked, the people were saying at the time of the shooting that, oh, um, the JD of Carpal hold up his hand and said, and said, I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier, and he was shot by police. That was the argument circulated. And this is the worst thing about the whole incident, you know, people and made the police so uncomfortable at the time. is because the narrative was spread by these gunmen through the people to the JDF members who were so, and most, most of them were so unprofessional when they came to see the gardens to assist us. And that was the worst part about it, people. The soldiers were attacked and the police defended themselves, which, they, which we had the right to do. I was on the front line and was, was one of the three first police outside of the station when the gunshots started fire. Matter of fact, the, start, the shots started fire at myself and, and two other police officers who I, I was not going to mention here. We were the first victim of the shooting. And Christopher Porter was not at the scene. All right, so you hear, you hear for yourself. Um, Detective Carpal Blake, you know, said that I was not there. And he owns that. What happened there? So I can tell you this. Um, that as a former detective and a former, you know, member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force working in St. Andrews South, I wasn't loved by criminals. Yeah, criminals never loved me. I was one of them, you know, one of the detectives with them eat with a passion. Because, you know, I am from the bully of the beast and I don't like people who violate other people's rights. If you violate other people's rights, you have, you have to answer to me because I was one of the detectives that was on the street. And as your detective, Carpal Blake, so, um, you know, alluded that I was not present. Okay, so let me address some things with this. what this man is saying. So, I, you know, I teach how propaganda is working. You know, so, all right. I was one of the detectives that opened that um, police station in Seaview Gardens in 1996. That was close to election. Yeah, so when the station was open, they, you know, they parried, um, they parried yours truly as one of the detectives um, for the people, the gunman, the man, all of them, troublemaker in a Seaview, fears one and fears two, you know that, hey, this is one of the man, one of the detectives who's going to be here. They know me from in you know, the early 90s and even then. I didn't know the kind of detective I was. So you know that I was one of the hated men um, in a St. Andrew South. One of the most hated detectives. Criminals hate me with a passion. Some of them, although they pretend they like me, they hate me because I have no friend when they come out to criminal. Friend, you kill people and rob people and harm people. No, I mean that. You understand? So because of that, no, I, have, I have a certain reputation as a no nonsense detective on the street. So. That's the first thing um, when you come out to see if you gardens. All right, so I was the one that opened, one of the detectives opened the, um, the station. Uh, myself and Detective Sergeant Wilkie and Detective Carpal Mackenzie. So it was three of us. Um, the entire time I was down by Seaview, um, even after election, yeah, you know, <laughs> it was quiet. Um, the boy when him Foxy um, that was down there, yes, at one point, um, that was because before election, you know, he had came over some in um, in phase one. No, phase two. Phase two is over. Phase two. 
and by um, by Marley side and you know that you know it was a in the early it was an early morning a confrontation and you understand something had, had happened with him and he seek um, treatment elsewhere for one of his son yes and that was the last time I saw him then after that someone uh, them sent um, criminals from the same community that this man um, that started this thing about Wayne Wayne Jubit Thomas who's a who's a child molester yeah well, I tell you that yeah man him trouble look up it and him thing there so that's how, that's where it coming from you know because I outed him um, after him, him him did the video so uh, no I'm gonna mix up with child molester and all of these things my real pistol so it was up by his um in his community they killed the guy when he foxy that was the only um shooting i was involved down there in seaview gardens yeah you know yeah um you know with foxy and you understand and he was charged and you know and, and that, that that was it second when this man's talking about that uh, you know that i had sent this um soldier man to the departure lounge because of woman which woman is that because no man in sea view guard no one in sea view gardens can say that i ever dated any woman down there which woman that and what's the name of the woman because they know that most of you people well no, i'm not talking people from the jamaica young police channel i'm talking dear viewers and subscribers because they can't think because you know that they are dummies so they can just tell them already oh yeah but i believe man him kill her him kill the soldier because a woman lies what's the new woman's name the man was married. I don't even know this man. So, my deepest condolences to the soldier. And the reason why I'm addressing it now is because of the Keith Clark thing, you know, and it comes comes up again. So, you know that them, yeah, them all is at me and them think they with all kind of things. But look here, I'm a big boy. So, I can tell you this. Um, Sir Porter, yeah, did not kill JDF Carpal Campbell in Seaview Gardens, Kinson 11, in 1999. He was not the not the only detective in St. Andrew South. So you are the fox. Cause people are a treat St. Andrew South when I was there. Like I was the only detective. You have so many other detectives, effective and brave though. I was not the only one. You understand what I'm saying? But they behave like everything that happened there, you know, back then when I was there, it was me. And you know, that's not true. You know, you understand what I'm saying? I don't want credit I, I don't take credit for things that I don't know and I have no regret of anything that I have done because everything that I have done in my life as a cop I follow the rule of law yeah you understand what I'm saying uh, Sir Porter is a dedicated law enforcement officer who upholds the rule of law and believe in self-defense however his enemies continue to spread lies falsely accusing him of committing unlawful killings these accusations are a part of a more extensive smear campaign orchestrated by individuals in, interested in discrediting him. These men are targeting Sir Porter because he has courageously exposed corruption within their political party and members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force who are in bed with these criminals and we make no apologies of exposing them. So we know that uh, when I have the problem, we know that they will be coming at us, so we, we have no problem. So their efforts to tarnish his reputation stem from their desire to protect their interests and undermine his credibility. So I tell you the people them who is behind it, we an ugly some and in farmer from Rockford living in Canada who yeah man has to be relocated from England to Canada because he's a big informer he had said he was a snitch a grass an informer in Canada in um, England and when he was about to be sent to the departure lunch yeah the, the Metropolitan Police them sent him relocate him to Canada because he that's him he cannot go to Jamaica because he has sent so many men from Rockford to prison in the United Kingdom when I ask you, we are telling that for a fact. This man is a big farmer and pretend and is a criminal enabler at the same at the same token because he's trying to maintain his street grid. 
I have no street cred to maintain because I don't support criminals, period. All criminals, yeah, must go to the departure long. I rather departure long than GP, period. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah, so you know that. So we in Ugly Sum, yeah, we in Ugly Sum, the fa you know, an informer, yeah, man, are among those spreading falsehood and propaganda against yours truly. So during the guest riot in 1999, Sir Porter was not even in Jamaica. I was not in Jamaica making the accusation accusations in videos by Wayne Thomas OC Juby completely baseless. Yeah, Wayne Thomas OC Juby is a child molester. When we say child molester, I'm rape a little bit now because children are under the age of 16 cannot give consent. So it's just rape. So um, he's a PMP LGBTQ plus criminal organization supporter and activist are uh, propagating these lies in a desperate attempt to silence a reporter who is from a community with a history of criminal activity but stand firm in speaking truth against the PMP criminal organization party's corruptions. It is essential to recognize these fabricated stories for what they are, a calculated effort to accuse a man committed to justice and integrity. So a reporter's dedication to exposing the truth and upholding the law should be commended. Not attack and with unfounded accusation. And look, we won't stop telling you the truth because that's what it's all about. The truth hurts only the guilty. So there you're looking at um, the men now. So the man at the top, that I man and him, Wayne Uglysome. Yeah, he's an informer from Rockford. And the man at the bottom, that is Wayne Thomas O.C. Juby, a child molester from Muskokana Waterhouse. So these are both men who have been, you know, trying to tarnish your truly reputation and name um, for their personal gains. Now I try to discredit your truly because they hate what I have been doing exposing the, um, the PMP criminal organization and what they have stand for because all these people have been doing over the decades decades is destroying people's life like lap man at the bottom and the one at the top because them can't think so their embryous criminality is a part of their genes them inhale and breed and support criminality but guess what it's when it turn on them that's when them denounce it but overall, them support criminality. Them believe that other people must abuse people's rights, but their rights must be maintained. You must protect the criminal rights and the criminals have rights. In which I do not believe in that. Because I am I was born and raised in a PMP community. If you violate somebody's rights, I do believe that you supposed to be sent to the departure lounge. I just simple as that. Yeah, because once I come to arrest you and you going to attack me, what do you expect? I wasn't trained to send people to KPH or the emergency room. I was trained to send you straight to the departure lounge and that's where you're going. So that's one of the main reasons why them hated yours truly. Because yeah, I love the departure lounge. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? So very few people you understand what I'm saying, yeah. So that's that's what it's all about. They want to silence yours truly. And because I had spoken up about um, the JDF soldiers killing um Keith Clark, which is murder. That is murder. You know, you cannot fire 572 M16, 5.56 millimeter rounds to just kill one man. And you expect that is not that um to you know for years truly to remain silent. No. You no matter who gave you the order to murder this man, these soldiers they are guilty of murder. But we know the court system in Jamaica and the system Jamaica hey, whether or not you want to believe in it, Jamaica is a corrupt, is a criminal's paradise, you know. And we don't know, you know, as I was talking with a friend, I don't know. I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel right now. I mean, uh, I am not going to lie. As I said before, and I'll say it again, one of the party, one of the party is just a little better than the other. So that means that if you if you can think, you understand what I'm saying. But we know that we can't stop people from telling lies on us. But we just want you to know that this is, you know, this is you know one of the lies that we have to address. There are so many lies that they have spread out there, especially the guy at the top. We in ugly some, and we, you know there are some things that should have you know that must be done, but in due course, you understand what I'm saying. We have so many things doing, and we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves and what is must be done, what must be done. 
I don't believe in who's right, but what is right. And it just goes simple as that. Some people don't believe in that. Some people just, from them like you, them just right with you. And from them like you, you can't run. You're always right. I don't believe in that. So, have yourself a beautiful. And before we go any further now, so now that we address this, we know that the people, them, vex because we are exposed, um, you know, the soldiers, them, were kill Keith Clark, so them vex. So, yeah, you know that, ah, uh, them, I say, Keith Clark are labor right. There's no, every, I don't care whether Keith Clark is labor right or PMP. Keith Clark is a Jamaican, was a Jamaican. This man was in his home doing what is right with his family and he was murdered. Yeah, man, the 572 rounds that were fired upon that man, there was no, no, there was not, not even a slim chance for him to live. That means that it's an assassination. This is you know, assassination. So uh, there's no self-defense in it. And everything else was staged and planted on the scene. We are talking about the buckles, the man, the M16 uh, magazine. So they want to say the man named from Tivoli, Oh, the man named from oh, the man named from TV, and there's no um, M16 special in the house that they claim that were shot. Um, sure that they, all of the M16 special that were recovered came from the soldiers' firearm. That goes to show you that they are the only ones that were firing their weapons there. So have yourself a beautiful day, Jamaica Young Police Channel out.